Let's begin with an empty scene in Blender 2.8. I've already set up the scene for modeling in millimeters. Add a standard cube and change the size to 10 millimeters. In edit mode, press 3 for face selection. Right click for the face context menu and choose extrude individual faces. Hold control and extend the extrusion to negative 10 millimeters. Now extrude individual again and extend this one to negative 2 millimeters. Now select two faces on the second extrusion at a right angle to each other as shown. Right click and choose Bridge Faces. Change the number of cuts to three. Deselect everything, then select two more right angle faces. Use the hotkey Shift R to repeat the last operation again. Simply repeat this process two more times around the model. Now rotate the model 180 degrees. Continue using Shift-R to create bridges between the faces along the bottom of the model as shown. Now select just the outside faces of the model. Invert the selection, then delete those faces. You should be left with this surface of curved quads. Select all of the faces. Control V to bring up the vertex menu. Choose Smooth Vertices from the list and use the default smoothing values. At this point the object should look exactly like you see here or very close to it. At the top of the viewport change the transform orientation to normal and the pivot point to individual origins. Now select only the quad faces at both the top and bottom poles of the object and scale the faces down to around 0.7. Select all the faces, press I to create an inset with a thickness value of at least 2 millimeters. Now delete the selected faces. Exit Edit Mode and add a Subdivision Surfaces modifier to the object. Leave the subdivisions at just one. Now add a Cast modifier and change the Factor value to 1.0. Now apply both modifiers to the object, and then re-enter edit mode. Press 2 for edge mode, then start joining the edges at the top of the model with the F hotkey as shown. This should create a square-shaped hole at the top pole of the model. Do the same for the bottom pole of the model as well.
At the top of the viewport, go to the Select menu and choose Select All by Trait, Non-Manifold. This will create a selection of all the border edges on the model. Right-click and choose Mark Scene from the Edge Context menu. This will provide a starting point to assist with UV unwrapping. Next, I'll start to strategically choose some other edges around the model to mark as seams. And typically, I'll go with edges that are in between certain surface landmarks on the model or areas where the edge flow changes. From there, I'll start incorporating seams from edges that split the larger surface areas in half. Once you're finished marking UV seams on the model, press Ctrl F for the face menu and choose Solidify from the list. Give the model a thickness of around 2.5 millimeters. In face select mode, select all of the boundary loop faces between the outer and inner surfaces of the object. Now go to the Select menu and under Select Loops, choose Select Boundary Loop. This should automatically convert your face selection into an edge selection and put you in edge select mode. Bring up the Edge Context menu and choose Edge Crease. Then change the crease factor to 0.5. Enter the UV editing workspace and press A to select all. In the right side panel at the top, open the UV menu and click unwrap. You should see the UV island map generated to the panel on your left. At this point, we could add a subdivision surfaces modifier to the object. Increase the subdivisions to at least four or until you get a very smooth appearance to the surface. Be sure you also increase the render subdivisions for rendering purposes or exporting out for 3D printing. Enable the look dev mode in the viewport and switch to the shading workspace. Create a new shader for the model. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, just click on the principled shader node and press Ctrl T to create a new texture mapping node system. In this case, I'm just going to delete the default texture node and replace it with a procedural Voronoi node and a bump node. The factor parameter of the Voronoi texture will drive the bump height, which in turn will drive the normal channel of the shader. Next, I'll change the X and Y scale parameters in the mapping node to around 50. Now I'll increase the scale parameter of the Voronoi node itself to around 20. I'll give it some subsurface scattering as well. Somewhere around 0.8 should be more than enough. Finally, I'll play around with the subsurface radius numbers for the RGB channels until you see the scatter color that suits with the look you're going for. 
As in the previous tutorial, I'm looking for a rough 3D printed plastic look here. That concludes this lesson. I hope you enjoyed creating this abstract shape. The model could be used as a 3D printed pendant, stress toy, or rendered for motion graphics even. Uh, if you like this type of modeling tutorial, please consider giving the video a like, and that would be greatly appreciated. Also, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified of new content uploads. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.